This is the Mamiya Secorsi 180mm f4.5. It's a short telephoto lens for the Mamiya RB67 series, and it also happens to be my most recent photography purchase, having been persuaded to buy it by Sophia Carey when she was on a recent trip over to Sheffield for a shoot a week ago. Having shot a few rules on it, I thought what I'd do is give you my thoughts on it and whether it might be right for you. Now, one of my main reasons for buying this lens is because this is the existing lens that I've got for the RB67, which is the 90mm 3.8. Now, this is an equivalent focal length of 44 millimeters on a full frame camera. And I've been wanting something with a little bit of reach for quite a while. I am going to put this down now because it's heavy. Now, with the 180 millimeter obviously being double the 90, that means that the equivalent focal length on full frame for the 180 is 88 millimeters or there or thereabouts. Now this is almost exactly the same as my Sony Macro 90 millimeter f2.8, which is what I use for the vast majority of my digital portraits. Now the aperture does only go down to 4.5, but that's not really an issue for me. On the depth of field side, on medium format 4.5 is still plenty shallow enough to get really, really nice depth of field and really make, make subjects stand out. And on the light side of things, you can always either use a faster film stock or you can push your film or use a tripod. There are always ways of, of getting around that. So the difference between 4.5 and 2.8 really isn't, isn't that mega when it comes to medium format. Now, let's not waste any more time and let's look at some of the images that this lens creates. And we'll start with a portrait session that I shot here in the studio with Kaya, where I shot some Kodak Portrait 800 in natural light. Now I'm absolutely loving the compression and depth that this lens gives, especially close up. And even shooting at f5.6 and higher, it gives a really nice effect where the focus drops off. The detail around the eyes is really, really sharp. And for what is essentially a 50 year old budget lens, the results are pretty astounding to be fair. Now I am really looking forward to shooting this lens with strobes and a low speed film to see just how good an image quality you can get from, as I say, this essentially budget lens. Now I also took the lens on a walk around Wentworth when I went with Sam, so that I could get an idea of what it's like for shooting things other than portraits. And again, I was absolutely blown away by the results. Again, it provided that extra reach that I've been looking for, matched up with the image quality. And bearing in mind that these images are all shot on expired Portra 160 from, I think it's 2016, that makes that image quality even more impressive. So let's look at the pros for this lens first and foremost. And the first one for me has to be the price. I paid 180 pounds for this with a 12 month warranty from Harrison Cameras in Sheffield. But since buying it, I have seen them knocking about for about 150, 160 pounds on eBay and other used places. So it is definitely worth having a look around. Now for that kind of money, when you take into account the image quality that you're getting, I think that's incredible value. One thing that is worth looking out for though is mine came with an adapter ring that goes in the back, which means that I can use this on my RB67 Pro, but if I upgraded to the Pro SD, I can still use it on that as well, even though it's a slightly different fitment. So it's just a little black, black ring that fits in the back. It's not in there at the moment because I've been shooting with it today. Um, but yeah, it's worth looking out for that. Also, it's an incredibly versatile lens. Now, yes, I bought it primarily for portraiture. And I'm really, really happy with the results. I love the compression. It's a focal length that I'm used to shooting on digital, but on medium format, it just looks even prettier. But I've also shot landscape, architectural, street photography shots with it. And it's a, it's a focal length that you can get really, really creative with. And finally, the size difference. So if I show you both of these side by side, I mean, yes, it is a little, quite a bit bigger than the 90 mil, but it only weighs about, I think it's about 750 grams. I'll put the exact weight on the screen, but that's only about 100 grams more than my Sony 90 millimeter uh, macro, which is like 40 years younger than this. So it's really not that heavy at all, especially for a super telephoto prime on medium format. Now, when we're looking at the flip side, looking at some of the cons of this lens, as I mentioned before, it does only stop down to f4.5, which for me personally is not a deal breaker at all, but for some people, they might really want that super, super shallow depth of field, that really fast lens, getting something down towards 3.8 or 2.8. Now, to be honest, I don't believe, and correct me if I'm wrong here, 
I don't believe that there is actually a faster 180 millimeter lens that's available for the RB. I know that for the RZ you can get faster ones, but I don't believe that there's a faster one for the RB, although I may well be mistaken. One thing that I know I won't be mistaken about is if there is one available, it will be a lot more expensive. So again, not a deal, but not a deal breaker for me in the slightest. Also, another con that really isn't a deal breaker for me is the minimum focusing distance. So it's slightly over 1.1 meters. But to be honest, I for me, I don't plan on shooting anything any closer than that anyway. Uh, you don't want to be getting less than a meter away from a model unless you've got a very specific shoot planned. Um, so yes, yeah, so that minimum focusing distance for me is not an issue. I don't plan on trying to shoot anything macro. So the fact that it, it doesn't do one-to-one -one representation doesn't bother me at all. But it is something that may affect you. So if that is something that you're looking for from your lens, this is not the right lens for you. So all in all, my initial thoughts on this lens, having used it for three or four rolls now, are that if you're looking for a lens that gives you a little bit more reach than you currently have, if you're looking for a short telephoto lens, if you're looking for something for portraiture, or if you're looking for something just to give you that little bit more than you're getting at the moment from like a standard 90mm lens or a 65 or whatever it is that you might have at the moment. For the money, I don't think there's any better option. Uh, the image quality I'm astounded by. I did not expect it to be that good at all, especially when this is not the Super Seco C, which I believe has... Um, slightly improved glass still that's still an f 4.5 uh, everything else about it is the same but i believe that due to the glass inside um it's slightly improved glass so slightly improved image quality but this provides great image quality as you'll have seen already the the detail around the eyes on those portraits is incredible now I, as i say i don't think that there's a better lens for the money but i am I am more than happy to be proved wrong. And if you have a viable alternative or something that you think is a better alternative, uh, then please let me know down in the comments below. I'm always happy to learn more. Just don't tell Sophia Carey about it because she will be yet again persuading me to part with my hard earned money for it. Other than that, thank you guys so, so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.